Hello and welcome back to the Popcorn for Dinner podcast. And welcome to this newly merged CPS and FX Super Desk. Today, we're going to talk about the season two finale of Industry. And joining me one last time at Pierpoint. Can he do it on a wet and rainy night in Stoke? You fucking know he can. It's Ayo and um... Ayo, how are you doing today? This week? good man i'm sad final episode yeah oh do you know what I'm i just kept on rewinding when i was watching it. i was like i don't want it to end i don't i don't want it to end yet. i just keep on going minus 10 minus 10 minus 10 oh yeah this is yeah anyway um yeah we're talking about season two episode eight of industry season two finale it's actually so wild that it's been it's been two months like eight weeks I, i'm actually like yeah but anyway yeah, any life updates? Has it really us? been eight weeks? Really? Already? Well, I mean, eight episodes. Wow. That's crazy. It is crazy. It's quite crazy. Okay, before we go into industry itself, do you want to, do you have any things from the Emmys you want to either shout out, give love to, talk about, any grievances you have? This you know, I'm happy, I'm, I'm happy you brung it up. <laughs> I'm happy you brung that up. Thanks. Yes. Like, I don't know. I was just, the Emmys were so underwhelming. Was in the the winners? Yeah. Well, in terms of surprise? Yeah, no, I was not surprised at anything, and even the surprises I didn't like. <laughs> like who? <laughs> you know the one. I actually don't think I know the one. This really is weird. Yeah. I didn't think Squid Game would win for directing. Oh, and you didn't like that? Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Of course, I didn't like that. There was an of... obvious winner. There was <laughs> an obvious winner. <laughs> do you do? You... <laughs> That's an obvious winner. We I'm obviously laughing. Nobody knows I'm laughing, but like, yeah, you get yeah, no so triggered. I don't so, know. You get so triggered talking about so, season so three finale of Succession. Story. Yes. Um, Banky brought up a stupid question. That would, no. Stop week. saying it like this. That's not what happened. And I got into this tirade about how season three episode, the last, the finale of mm-hmm. season three of Succession is one of the best episodes of television of all time. It's top two. And I don't Nobody's know. arguing with you. I love I don't understand. I love succession. I'm not arguing okay. this with you. That's why you're laughing because I'm I got I got really triggered again. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> when when that episode Oh, happened. when it happened, I, I was like, yeah. I mean, luckily Jesse Armstrong won for that one for that episode, writing that episode. Yeah. But I mean, like, we've discussed this before in terms was it just in voting, how White Lotus like there's a lot of oh, this was this show was a phenomenon, we liked it a lot, and we're just gonna vote for it because like yeah, Squid Game, was, was it best drama? No, it wasn't the best drama last year. Was it a very good drama? Yes, I, I quite enjoyed it. But obviously, they want to give love to, like, something that's out, an outlier, new South Korean. And, like, look, I guess fair enough. Um, I thought it was going to win best drama the way it was moving. That would have that would have really, really, like, <laughs> triggered me. But Yeah, um, I, might have, I might have blocked you. <laughs> As for you, <laughs> why is that? You am I responsible? <laughs> no, but you were the you were the one retweeting the winners onto my timeline, <laughs> and it was annoying. Look, I'm sorry. I just had to do. I had oh. to do work. Well, 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 I feel my TV podcast. I had to do the work on the platform. <laughs> oh, I, I wasn't. I wasn't very happy. I mean, kudos to them. They they did a good job. Yeah, I mean, like it's not. It's not the. It's a good show. Come like, on. yeah, did it? Was it better than Succession? No, but it's a good show. I mean, I guess. It depends on how you want to do it again. I guess the argument could be, oh, Succession is going to win Best Drama. Let's, let's. It goes on to, you know, we had a bit about the Oscars. Like, what is what are the Emmys for? Are the Emmys to reward the best? Or, like, to maybe sometimes highlight some shows that might not re- otherwise get some love? You highlight them by nominating them because they've done good work. Look, yeah, I'm not, me, just I'm, like their point, I'm not, I want to believe in a meritocracy. I'm like, I don't, I don't want us to be doing, there's no pity stuff here. No. I mean, like, anyway. That was yeah. not the best episode of TV directed last. No, they shouldn't be winning that. And I think then seeing the like seeing the winners mm-hmm. really like dredged up the hurt I felt about some of the best shows. Just shout it out. Mini- Under the Banner of Heaven. That's that's, that's, that's what we're talking heaven, about. And we own this city. Oh, let's not talk yeah. about that. That was, that was too depressing. That was zero nomination. Oh, out? That oh, was, man. Let's not talk about being on this. The Emmys are sham. They've lost all credibility in my eyes. Um, 
that that look that was Bento's win. I mean, I haven't watched Dope Six. I'm not going to talk about Michael Keaton's performance. Everybody seems to love it. I loved. Oh no, I loved Dope Six, and I loved yeah. Michael's Michael Keaton's performance in Dope Six. Although I don't think he was even the best. He didn't give the best performance in that show. Like Caitlin Dever did the best work in that show. Yeah, I think she was nominated. I think she was nominated. <clears throat> uh, another, another like what? Anyways, I mean, my look. I don't want. Yeah, I, I don't want to be the hater, or whatever. I, I mean, look, Julia not, Julia Garner has was always great on Ozark. Always, Ruth was always great on Ozark. Three Emmy wins back to back to back is a bit ridiculous. It's Consi- considering like. You're beating Sarah Snook from this season of Succession. It's just like, ah, well, look. The quality we had on display on TV this year is ridiculous. And then for us to have these winners, I mean, again, no disrespect to the winners, but you weren't the best. But it's cool. <laughs> I mean, look, Barry got shut out. And I, I don't, I know you don't watch Barry, but watch Barry, what they did this season was was different level. Like, there's an episode where you hear that director just like seven ten and it's just different level. But look, whatever. Um, I didn't actively hate any of them, and Abbott Elementary got some love, which was nice. So, um, yeah. <laughs> this was no one. I thought you were going to, like, oh, it's cute that Quinta Brunson won. I didn't think you were going to win. Oh, fuck. I don't give a fuck. She was always going to win, and that's a good win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> no, the anger I felt. The anger I felt was ridiculous. Did I you was like Squid Game? Oh, no, I loved Squid Game. Okay. You just didn't I tell you to watch Squid Game? I don't No, I don't think so. Or like, I think we spoke about it and you were like, oh yeah, I'm going to watch it. Or I oh yeah, because I don't, I don't, I don't know what it when it was hype. So I wanted to yeah, come yeah. Down, so I, I think I, 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 yeah, I, I remember talking to you about it. Mm-hmm. Anyways, it's cool now. Let's talk about what <laughs> is. Current. That was meant to be like two minutes. I didn't think I was going to get to ten minutes of talking about. It. <laughs> you triggered me again. Uh, okay, let's talk about industry. A genuinely, look, can I just say something? Well, obviously, I was watching the Emmys live and obviously it came out it was happening on monday which is the same day industry comes out in america and mihala was tweeting about like the industry episode i was just like man next year you you really need to be in this hall you need to be at the emmys next year like i don't I, like no none of that, that would be me what you just had would be me before an entire episode i'm just like this is like look look first episode first season whatever it goes under the radar but second season like these guys really need to get the love i hope they do um Although oh, drama, man, the crown is coming back. Succession will have an epi- will have a, a what do you call it? A season, season next year. Then. Soul House as of well. The Dragon will be there. House of the Dragon, maybe Westworld, maybe. Oh, uh, I don't. I don't think Westworld is getting a lot of love this year. Oh, no, I don't. I, I don't think it will. But I'm saying it's there. It's it's going to be oh, okay. like they are always considered. It's definitely going to be considered. Um, but yeah, I just really hope industry gets some representation. Anyways, um, season finale, industry season two, episode eight. Title Jerusalem, written by co-creators Mickey Down and Conrad K, and directed by Isabella Eklof, Ayo's dream team. Um, quickly before we even go into talking about the characters, but the episode starts off with a meeting with uh, Namura and DVD, the meeting with Namura that DVD set off from last episode, and just, I just look, it's a good meeting. What is something that? caught my eye immediately it was just like the wording that eric was using in that meeting i think he talks about how they were gutted and he talks about how he would murder their old team i was like this is just very aggressive wording it's very, eric, violent. It's very violent um but yeah nomura is intrigued by them actually if they're coming with bloom actually only if they're coming with bloom mm-hmm. then they drop the bombshell that they would need to relocate the four of them to to new york and harper and eric clearly don't take that well Speaking of Harper, we mentioned in episode six about her obvious like lack of relation when DVD tells her that she's going to be moving over to Mothership in New York. Uh-huh. And, and I like that this episode, they get to build up on that. And she outrightly says it to, to Eric that going back to New York would be would be a failure um, or rather a defeat. Those are her words. Anyways, from that moment with in the Namora meeting, you can almost see the gears turning behind her head um, at a bar after the meeting while DVD and Rishi are celebrating. Eric and Harper are kind of like licking their wounds on, on being to the, the other the other two. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to say about this part, like this first part of the episode? Uh, in regards to Harper. There was there was some terrific ADR there. Oh, incredible. They're all in my they're all in my like extra lines. Like oh, oh incredible. There was incredible. Some terrific ADR there. So I don't I don't even blame them for not noticing that 
Oh, Rishi, that, Rishi that, that, yeah. It was just incredible. Harper and and um, uh, Eric, Eric were not were not happy. No, I mean, also, happy. it's just like it's not a, re- a conversation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah. Because uh, anyway, but yeah, later that day, Harper goes home obviously, and Gus meets her, and he's giving kind of like the morning off, and she finds out through from him that the anti-competition inquiry has been cancelled, and Amazon's purchase of Passive is going to go ahead. And what does our favorite impulsive American do? She goes straight to Bloom straight with to the Bloom. information. Um, yeah, and Bloom seems to dismiss her. Apparently, I don't even think that that was even like impulsive. I think it was like she was like, "Oh, finally, there was something. There's hey, something I can take to him." You know, it's yeah. not like I wasn't on a whim. I think she was looking for it. Oh yeah, I guess it wasn't a whim. But do you think if she thought about it multiple times, she would have still done it? Yes, a hundred percent. Inside that, anyway. Yeah, I guess she was. She didn't really have options. Her back was against the wall. Yeah, her back was against the wall. I think she's she's. I mean, she was careful, in air quotes. Yeah, in how she said to, it, uh, like when mm-hmm. she did it. So, like, I don't. I am under no illusions. I'm sure. I'm sure she would have gone she to. Don't, it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then Bloom kind of seems to dismiss her. Apparently, not wanting to act on inside that information that can be very clearly traced. Like it's not, yeah. It's it's a straight line. It's very. It's two stops. It's not even difficult to figure out where it came from. And then she goes to Pierre points to meet Eric, and then finance happens. Right, a, a, a lot of finance. Um, just a quick run through of what happens. Jesse texts Harper while he's live on air to buy Reich and stocks, but he's, because he's about to talk an anti-corruption inquiry into existence, thereby making his first aid short profitable and also making money on the Reich and stocks that he already has and that he will buy. Um, so he decides to yeah go ahead and trade on some information, but just on his own terms. <laughs> and when it's all said and done, Harper looks like she like she's just killed someone. Like the, the look of worry on her face is. I mean, we'll talk about Mihala's performance a bit later towards the episode, but I think here we just have to like. I think this sequence, like the acting here, it's like oh, it yeah, it's just like the first thing I, th- I thought of was like. Um, Kendall post killing the kid in season one. It's just like you can oh, see, yeah. you can just see it on her face. Um, yeah, any thoughts on that before? Because I have something I want to talk about with that. Um, sequence. Eric's, I think Eric's reactions or like Eric and Harper's interactions throughout this episode were mm. interesting to me because his reaction there was not what I was expecting. Like after she came back. Yeah, like mm-hmm. when she came and she, he was like, oh, you look like you've just witnessed infanticide or something like that. <laughs> of all crimes to go to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was also like a theme I thought was going through this episode. There was a lot of um, there was a lot of that. But yeah, we can touch, touch on that. But a lot of what? Infanticide? Not infanticide, but like there was a lot of... How do I put this? There was a lot of like parental child oh, okay. like, dynamics okay. throughout the throughout the episode, I think. Because That's, Bloom okay. even calls like when he's doing the texting, he's texting Harper. He calls her his son. Well, his kid. He's like, his Oh, I'm kid, texting probably, my yeah. kid. We're yeah. really close. And then he looks directly in the camera. And then yeah. there was the there was the Icarus reference, which is also, you know, a story oh, wow. about a father and a, and then and there's then, the thing with Gus where he's like, I'll be proud of you as well. Exactly. Exactly. Obviously, the Robert, what, what, what stepping on points we're going to talk about, but obviously, the Robert and yeah. um, Nicole thing. Obviously, and then the um, Yaz. <laughs> Yaz. Diana is pregnant. Oh, you see, I didn't even get that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Was... But yeah, I felt like there was a whole theme of, of parental child relationships or like even like legacy. <laughs> With, in this. with yeah, which is something we want to talk about when, when we get to. And just, also, Harper calls Eric dad later in the episode. Oh yes, she, she does. Oh my god, that's yeah. This is. I'm watching TV. You're like, watching TV. Child. You're watching TV. <laughs> I, I I thought. <laughs> I was just really just really um distracted by the fact that Succession didn't win best directing for a drama series, but you were focused. You were focused on uh, uh, on this episode. <laughs> Do you know what? I'd watched this episode before. Yeah, oh, before the Emmys. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah. That's actually, yeah. And that thing about legacy. I'll talk about it. just a bit of. In case you want to skip, guys, we're going to talk about the last five minutes of this episode at the end of this episode, just because we, that deserves its time. And mm-hmm. I'll talk about that about legacy as well. That's I didn't really get anything about. Well, that's yeah. Well done. Okay. Well done to you. Well done to Mickey. Well done to Conrad. Well done to Isabella. Just like yeah. Well done. Um. 
So on second watch, I, and I don't know again if it's me just trying to look for the better nature of Harper, but I got the impression that maybe she didn't know he wouldn't, like, or rather I believed that she didn't know he would go this far. He being, being Bloom. I believe that, that too. Okay. That he, she just thought, okay, I'll give him his formation. He would stop out of his, yeah. Yes. And when he texts her, she just think, okay, maybe he's going to like talk up the Riken, Riken stock, which is yeah. what she told him to do, obviously, episode, I think that was episode six. Yeah. She doesn't know that he's going to talk up Riken and also talk down fasted and also talk into existence and anti-inquiry, <laughs> uh, anti-competition inquiry. And so, yeah, I think, okay, so to, okay, one same, one same boat, because I just thought like, okay, she didn't, maybe she didn't actually believe that he was going to go this far into into what he was doing. Um, yeah, and then leads us to one of the big turning points of Harper's, of Harper's episode, which is quite proactive, is the meeting with, um, the meeting between Harper and Eric and Adler. First of all, Mickey and Cormac, if for some reason you listen to this, just put an Adler meeting every season finale. Just go ahead and do that. I was going to say that. <laughs> He's really good. Just, He's just a really up, good character. Just go I, ahead and put him in. Oh, just once in a while, I love yeah. How, I love how, like... <laughs> so, to talk about the meeting. So, mm-hmm. they, they are trying to plot on how they're going to stay in London, right? And mm-hmm. they... Well, they being Eric, um, slots in a meeting with Adler. And now that they think that they have Bloom's ear back, or they think they have Bloom for sure, mm-hmm. they go to Adler to sort of twist his arm and make him keep them in particular. Eric wants to set up a new team, I guess, that will be based in London. Yeah. And will allow him to basically do CPS, but on a bigger scale, but with mm-hmm. less people. So they take home more money. Um, I love the scene, man. It was, I think it was one of my favorites in the episode. Adler is too good because <laughs> the scene starts off and he's like, what the hell are you guys doing here? And then they start talking and he was like, hmm, do the numbers make sense? Yeah. <laughs> and I love that. Like, maybe she's like, oh, I represent Bloom and he's your fucking business. Like, oh, okay, does numbers make sense? Like, and I was hmm. like, I don't think numbers work, but if you cut out these people, like, oh, okay, okay, I can, I can make it work. It's just like, again, it's just, there's business. Once there's business involved, business. which is another thing I want to talk about later in the episode. Um, but yeah, Harper does something. She throws DVD and reaches under the bus. And what I liked about this was like, it was a surprise to Eric. You can see that Eric was like, "Yeah, he paused." I, do you actually want to do this? Or they, obviously he just has to go with with the. He, she's made the play. He has to go with it. Um, the young person's game. Young person's game. Yeah, and then obviously they then throw in a little blackmail just to stop it all off, um, threatening Adler that they could expose the fact that he's covering up HR mosquitoes in his in his word um i think I mean, that whole the whole scene of them trying to pressure adler killed me like his responses in particular killed me because the first time eric's like we should do this and adler's like well i don't respond well to pressure from below from which below. is a great line so incredible i love it so line. much and a wonderful <laughs> line reading it's so good but like, it could stop at i don't have to really respond to pressure full stop but like from below it's just from below, beautiful it's like it's what are you beautiful. talking about and this is the guy that hired you <laughs> fuck man it's so good and then and then they bring up oh hr um nicole's been touching women <clears throat> and harper's like oh, i'm gonna testify to that and he's like <laughs> so he, like this is a poxy threat he, was, he called it a poxy threat and i had to look up that word because i never heard it before and what does like, it mean Meek. oh <laughs> perfect <laughs> Week, <laughs> like, come up with your. <laughs> I was like, man, go ahead, go, go off, Adler. Man. Yeah, well, go off, B- that's my Bill boy. Adler, Willie Adler. Uh, Willie, they call him <laughs> so in the beginning of the episode. DVD refers to him as William P. Adler, <laughs> which killed me. <laughs> and then at the beginning of this meeting, Eric says Willie, <laughs> and that also killed me. Uh, but yeah, um, that's where that scene ends. And I mean, obviously, I spoke about it last week where I expected another betrayal. Uh, I just felt like there was something else. Yeah, yeah. And we also kind of theorized being a season of Dintry that it was going to be, it could probably be Harper and Eric versus DVD. Um, yeah, and then let's talk about, we talk about Rishi, Rishi and Harper. Um, <laughs> wait, what? Wait, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> explain why that reaction? That's a very, why that reaction? Keep keep going, keep going. I I, I don't know if I, I was just gonna be like first of all I was gonna be like she was at his wedding, so like we 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 were wrong on that. Yeah, we were. But we I was gonna were. talk about like 
them getting the poison out. But like, what is it? What is the thing that gave you that? I think that was that was the most uncomfortable I've been this whole season of industry. Why? Why is that the thing that broke you? I was so uncomfortable, Banky. I'm just on his wedding. Eve, oh, you believe in love? I just don't really like cheaters, Banky. I'm no, sorry. Uh, look, this is we're not pro cheater. Just like this is interesting. Sounds like, like you are pro no, cheater. <laughs> I just feel like when in Rome, I feel like this is the show that they they told us they are. Why is this the thing that is breaking you? Ah oh, man, I was just so, I was just really really disappointed. I was a little disgusted. So then... what are you? Who? Both of them? Any of like? Yeah, both of them. Oh, okay. But more Rishi because he's the one doing the cheating. Uh-huh. And I mean, like, I theorized that Harper was doing it because you know she just fucked him, so you know, <laughs> let him get to fuck her. I guess. <laughs> I know. I think she wanted. I think she always wanted to do that as well. To give Rishi, really? Yeah. I, Harper doesn't. I don't think Harper. Those two things are so separate to her. I don't think like fair, fucking fair. and like all You're that right. is like yeah. I don't like she wants to do coke with him. Like she like like if she really felt any kind of guilt, which I guess she does because she says she's happy in the end. Like she was she relieved. Just, she, yeah, relieved. <laughs> relief like, she is have, different from <laughs> yeah. I guess happiness. she'd have run away immediately. He like like immediately. Um, Rishi came the in. Conversation like, was yeah. done, right? Yeah. I think she wanted to fuck him. And like like yeah. So I mean, I'm not <laughs> I'm not pro that sequence. I'm not like this is a good thing that happened. I'm just like this is industry. Nothing here is like this is not what's gonna break me. <laughs> I was really upset. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Rishi man. Um, I yeah. More from him. I mean, him kissing her immediately after saying. This is what I should be doing about his marriage. Mm-hmm. It's just like I don't know. It's shave level of 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 actions to me. It's like I, I don't. It's, just, it's bad. It's, it's bad. Oh, of course it's bad. Nobody's argues, but um, but also he's probably marrying him. I'm marrying marrying to a UK family. I don't know. Maybe maybe Diana deserves it. No, she doesn't. Maybe she does. I don't know. She's maybe she's a terrible person. She maybe might. she's a racist. I don't also, know. I was surprised that they got married in a church. I didn't think Rishi was Christian. Uh, British, I guess. I think okay. it's her. I think this is really her. I think all this is like her, her family, white, British, whatever. Um, I was going to talk about, this, talk about this later, but this is right here. Did you catch the cameo at the church? No. What was oh, the Mickey was one of his best men. Oh, do you know I didn't see that? <laughs> yeah, Mickey's right behind him. I didn't notice. I was focused on Yasmin and Harper. <laughs> okay, speaking of, let's talk about Yasmin. Um, no, we haven't finished half a story yet. I think yeah, that, the that's... rest is the end. I will keep that to the later. Okay, fair, fair. Yeah, um, I, if if we talk about the end now, everybody just clock up. Nobody will finish the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's how much faith I have that they, they likely listen to my voice. Um, let's talk about Yasmin while we still have them on the hook. Um, the way I read it was that Yasmin's well, Yasmin's guilt about her father's action, but also in, mainly in my opinion, her guilt about her reaction to venetia venetia yeah. yeah is eating at her and she tells celeste that they i.e celeste and yasmin need to stop representing men like her in which celeste drops an incredible anecdote about supporting people of about working for people supporters of epstein which is just like okay celeste Not this supporters, is supporters bro this, clients or clients rather that's what I mean. yeah i'm like that is who you, celeste is which is fair, fair. enough okay yeah, yeah like it. <laughs> fair enough. It, yeah yeah um it reminded me of um Inside Man, the Spike Lee film with Denzel, in which Judy Foster kind of plays a fixer. And like earlier in the episode, they just kind of random they just randomly drop the fact that she's um looking for an apartment for one of bin Laden's nephews. Like just like <laughs> that is who she is. This movie came out like oh five, I think, oh six inside man. So it's like anyway. He's fresh. But, sorry? Yeah, it's fresh. It would have been fresh. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Um but yeah, um, Yasmin tells Celeste that he to stop working for this kind of or working with this kind of men and Celeste tells her to grow up, essentially. Basically, yeah. And I have the quote that Celeste says here, which I really, really loved. It was like, do you want to operate within the system and be successful or do you want to dream you can change it and be left behind? Mm. And I love it because it's so different from what we normally hear. Like, we normally hear, oh, you need to get into the system and then you can change it from within. Uh, or like, But Celeste is like, no, no, no. Get into the system and just make money. Like, fuck all this changing shit. Like, don't... You're not going to change the system. Like, I'm working for people that, like, are clients of Epstein. I just I just felt like it was different. It's just very clear. Like, this is the world we're in. Like, it's business. It's money. Printing biz works. Um, and that comes immediately after a scene. We're going to talk about it later. But it comes immediately after the Nicole and Robert scene. 
which I think. <laughs> can you keep your? <laughs> this is not good analysis. <laughs> just, just <laughs> his scenario to like I just not good analysis. <laughs> Oh my god! I hate Nicole so much. Anyways, go ahead. Anyway, but like obviously we'll get to the Nicole and Robert scene, but that scene just underscores the fact, which I think you mentioned earlier, just like money's king here, right? And I like the fact that Celeste is like Nicole is like one. I have the money, like I have like shut up money. I have like fuck you money. And I'm yeah, yeah, do yeah. That. And immediately after Celeste is like, I'm just get into the system and make it work for you. Get the money. Like I'm not trying to be a reformer. That's not who I am. Um. Yeah, and then you asked me before you asked me meet her dad, but before we dad, do you have anything about that Yasmin and Celeste scene? No, 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 I think he's covered everything. Okay, so Yasmin meets her dad for lunch and then drops the the first big word of the episode, Ooh. in my opinion. <laughs> and it genuinely takes him aback. She she accuses him of grooming Teresa Nani in his words. Mm. Um Teresa Nani, that was great. And then an incredible scene ensues. Do you want to do you remember when you said you loved him? I still love him. <laughs> Okay, I still enough. love that he has. I still love that he has. And I think this episode made me love him again. I think I kind of fell off the yeah. that he has hat yeah. trick for a bit. But like this this scene, which mm-hmm. is my best, like it's my favorite scene in this episode. Oh, really? Oh, no. Like it's not even, yeah, yeah. Actually, wait, let me, let me, give, give me a second. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the others are great, but this one actually, yeah, I don't think it's, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right it's my right. favorite scene in this episode because both the actors are, they are acting their pants off. And the writing Different. is, oh, the writing was sparkling the whole time. So in the scene, mm-hmm. um, yes, like you said, Yasmin accuses Daddy Yaz of grooming Teresa Nani. <laughs> and he, he, he looks so upset by the accusation like his demeanor changes for the first time i think we see him harden for the first time around yasmin and he's like you have to retract that and then she goes on her little tirade or like you know like she was a child when we start liking her yeah when she Mm -hmm. grew and (laughs) one note i have is like why are they shouting because bro people are looking (laughs) loud they were being loud. When he goes um, for fuck words, I think he said you have to apologize on there and then yeah. people turn around. Like, turn around. And then there's a little laugh on on the... Is on there? The side. Yeah. Oh, I didn't catch that. Yeah. There's a little laugh. Um, That's hilarious. So she accuses him and basically goes into detail of how he she thinks he groomed Teresa Nani. Yeah. He's trying to defend himself, but yeah. it's not working. And then the switch up happens. Ew. He takes Jesus Christ. He puts Ew. his glasses up and it's oh man. Thank you. I was hard, man. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, man. It was Ew. it Wait, did some I, things to me, bro. But does he say like I hope you look look at yourself or something? He said, he said he said like, oh, so you you're you can't you were no, what did he say? He's like, We're seeing the world for it is like for what it is right now. Mm-hmm. So can you see yourself? And bro, he begins to systematically take Yasmin apart. Says She says, oh, I'm trying to make it in the world. Yeah. I think that's basically her thesis. And mm-hmm, he, mm-hmm. he takes that. Like the good writer stroke publisher he is. And he breaks, <laughs> he breaks it apart. He said, you're trying to what? First of all, you don't have any money. You've been living your life off me for a while. Your life, your, your entire life, yeah. Your entire life, you've been living off me. You would go around, go on holidays, 14 spend holidays all this money. Ew, 14, 14 holidays, holidays a it's year is more than one. It's more than more one. More than one month. month. It's ridiculous. She probably goes twice in August, twice in September. So she does that, gives him the bill, he pays it, doesn't care. And like he mentions that she never unlinked his bank account from hers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So her earnings, her Just point earnings, into his, yeah. flow into, which makes sense for earlier in the season why she didn't know. realize yeah. they got paid. Mm-hmm. And then he drops another bomb of <sighs> how do you think you got into Pierpoint with your average grades from an average, average university, university to a desk that you didn't apply for? And ah, uh, Yasmin's, Yasmin, Yasmin's walls <laughs> crumbles, crumbles in a second. Oh my God. I was like, oh my God. God, what a dressing down. This what is ridiculous. An, an incredible <laughs> sequence. And then Yasmin does something that is entirely Yasmin. So, you know, self-righteous and kind of stupid. <laughs> she says, 
No, like, like she, someone has told you that you are, like, I've made you. Like, mm-hmm. everything you think you are is coming from me. You now say, I, know, I want nothing to do with you. Bro, what do you think is going to happen next? Okay, I have some, I have a question about the logistics of this cutting off. Because she's still, like, she should still have access to her peer point money, though. Like, at least you should give her that. I mean, he might, but... <laughs> He's blocked her access to his account. It's yeah, his but, account. Like, for these next two, three days, she's penniless. She literally has zero to her name. Because she's dumb. Like, at least give her, like, her peer point money. Because, like, she had to borrow 20 pounds for... for... She's a dumb babe. Why would she Also, do she definitely that? took, like, a black cab, didn't she? She didn't just take, like, a yeah, cheap, cheap yeah, Uber. Yeah. Like, you're poor, babes. Like, like anyway. But, like... I mean, her gonna... Uber would, might have declined if the card... Oh, yeah. The card would have been... Oh, yeah, yeah. shit. Yeah, so that's sticky. Yeah, that's why yeah. she has to take a black cap. That dressing, and then she calls him like, like I don't know you. At least I knew. When did you see her walking? Like you know yeah, that house yeah. is locked. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, there's no reason for us to watch you her walk into the house if if it's going like, to open up. I was like, you know, but yeah, you I was know, aware. I was like, you know, the house is that house is locked. And then she called. She calls him almost like, what happened? And then, <laughs> that's another thing that really cracked me up. She seemed genuinely confused. She said, I can't get into the house. <laughs> and I can't say, yeah, because I changed the locks, bro. And then he's crying, which is a different thing. That, that's like, that's a different kind of manipulation that we don't have the yeah. time to get into. But who's been living upstairs then? I think they probably rent it out, right? Oh, uh, fair. Yeah, that was, yeah. I just think that she should have, like, he should have put some paper. But I guess he doesn't say less if he doesn't put, give her a few days penniless. Um, but yeah, that, actually, so... Before she finds out that her house is locked, she kind of has a falling out with Celeste, which she then implies this oh, that means yes, she's at the end that. of her job yeah. with, with peer points. Yeah. And I love how to you and I, and I don't want to speak for you, but like to you and I, Yasmin is very she's like this very impressive, well read, well traveled person. Because we've we talked about her earlier in the season. Oh, it's so incredible mm-hmm. because these languages. But people like Celeste and even like her dad, she's just one of many. Mm. Like, there are so many Yasmins that Celeste is going to come across. Like, she was only important, not because of, she speaks French and German or whatever. She was important because of who her father was. Exactly. And I, I think that's like, that just shows like the difference between our worlds, like you and I and like the Celeste them world. Like, no, but then, but then I feel like that we also picked up on that, right? Like, that's one of Yasmin's like main insecurities. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Right? Yeah. That she isn't like genuinely good at her job. Like, she's a good relationship manager do you but, think like and okay maybe maybe at fx i don't think she ever yeah, at at FX, PWM. At FX. yeah okay yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, pwm is just like managing relationships yeah, right like, yeah but like you need to be able to go out there and build the relationships get them in and bring them into the company like you need to win clients that kind of thing if yasmin is now saying oh i'm not gonna work with bad men anymore <laughs> so that's like you leaves know, nobody else they, you're not <laughs> You're not worth anything. You're costing me money at this point. If you're now not bringing your daddy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it co- yes, cost me money. Yeah, I just like I just found this interesting. I, was, I don't know. I was really, I was really surprised by Yasmin's naivete in this episode. Like both those interactions, like both with her father and with Celeste, the second one. I was just like, really? The Celeste one surprised me, but the father one, not really. Because like, what did you expect her to do? I, I, when somebody tells you I am the source, <laughs> yes. you relax. Yes, me. You relax. But like, for Yasmin, who wants to be, what does Celeste call her? A crusader. Mm. She can't relax at that point because she's already kind of, she feels like she's started digging or she started pushing. Like she has to, I, I wouldn't say it in that moment. If I was, if, let's say if I was Yasmin, I'll do it step by step. I'll probably go get my things first before I say I want to cut yeah. you off. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you but I also relax. think she's very, very emotional. Like he, like you can see, like he, he he sunned her. He really made her feel like, like, like he I don't, I don't get back you, but like all that kind of stuff should be sobering. <laughs> if somebody tells me that kind of, it thing, can also and, be very. It can also be it's true. It's yeah, not it, going to spur me to now go and I need to go and reflect. I need to go back and no. Regroup. You're talking about you though. You're talking about yes. No, like, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm talking someone, about me. yeah. If someone is emotional and angry, it could get like you said. It could spur them on. It could make them quite angry. But not not everything would be like. If you're a dumbass, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you call yes earlier? Um, <laughs> impulsive. What did you? What? what, what says you... self righteous and a little dumb. Yeah. So exactly. And when that comes together, you get what happens in that <laughs> during that lunch. Yeah, man. The uh, Celeste one, I just felt like you have to like come on. 
Like you have to know the pool you're dealing with. Like that's exactly. the last one. I was like, like the father one is different because it's personal. There's a bit of quote unquote grooming. All that is someone that you knew. You might have a half sibling somewhere. <laughs> but we said less. Like your it's job is it your job. You know what you're doing. What are you doing? What are you doing? like? Well, you're gonna quit and work where so that one i found was very very naive and i just loved when celeste was like you forget how many girls there are just like you i was like oh mm. wow okay she's not as special as i thought she was like there are probably other girls who maybe some of them went to eton and oxford and cambridge who who speak all the languages and have all the relations and every, relationships and everything so and have no moral compass no, no moral compass yeah i mean look this babe literally the day before you had two meetings one was with, was with an arab sheikh and the other was with a woman who was trying to sports wash through Chelsea Football Club. Like, know where you're working. Like, what are you doing? Anyway, uh, yeah, Yasmin, long story short, gets, goes to Rishi's wedding and her and Harper finally reconnect and realize how awful they've been to each other. I love that scene. I just love... I really like <laughs> That's like, why I didn't notice the cameo. <laughs> they were like, okay, that's, that's a good... Idea. Hopefully he takes as he understands. Yes, um <laughs> But yeah, they realize how awful they've been to each other. And um, later the next day, or probably the next Monday, Yasmin has an earnest breakfast with Venetia where... Does she apologize? Yes. No. I mean, the, no. She asks how she is. I don't know if she yeah, apologizes. Yeah, she asks how she is. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember. I don't think she does, though. Yeah, and then she, she skips out on the bill. Um, <laughs> she looks so funny trying to do a dine and dash. Banky, have you dined and dashed before? I haven't, because you really? know you, you know me, though. You know I, That's fair. I'm not surprised by this news. Y- yeah, you know that I'm way too just scared to put myself in that kind of situation. Like, I'm not, because, you no. Know, if anything happens, and all that I say, my thing is always, like, if something goes wrong, what will be my excuse? Like, you know, for so long, I didn't use, like, um... Torrent was... Insights. <laughs> I'm going to bleep that. Um, for so long, I didn't use um, self-checkout. Ah, really? <laughs> because I was just like, what if that's the day I forgot how much is my bank card? And then I, and I, it just, like, I don't want to be, I'm, I'm too scared of embarrassment. I don't want to, like, it to be, but, like, it's not working. Everybody's looking at me. <laughs> right? That's just, <laughs> look, this is the thing that goes through my head. So I've had a self checker for so long, just for no reason. But, like, so, yeah, I'm not myself in dying in that situation because I'm just like, what if I'm the one that gets caught? What if we all run and then it's me that they catch? What would I say? What would I say to you? Fair. Um, but yeah, she dine and, dines and dashes on two, about two hundred and twenty pounds or something, which is mm. like, what, what are these guys eating? Somebody ordered something that was ninety pounds. Like, what what are you ordering? That Big was like, boy restaurant. Was it breakfast? Wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. I mean, we can talk about yeah, just Yasmin, which that might be the last we see of her this season. What what did you? She says she's probably going to leave Pierpoint, so mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I'm intrigued to know what her future could hold. Um. She's obviously going to try to be a lot more independent. Which I don't know what the next few months of her life are look like. Will look she, like when yeah. she's looking for a job. Um, you might move in with Harper. Where? Oh, they get know. a place together. Harper's Harper then with Robert and Gus. Oh yeah, with Robert and Gus. Yeah, they might get a place together. But she doesn't have money to pay. No, no, they will pay her salary now. Harper. But she doesn't have a job yet. The last salary they will pay her. Oh. Okay. <laughs> they pay her last salary, and also if they sack her, do they? Do they do severance packages in this country? Uh, he's never been sacked. Why would they sack her? I don't think they would sack her. Yeah, I don't know. So what do you mean she doesn't have a job? You think she would just leave? She said she, wants, she said she She said she might have to be up now. Is that what she said? I beg her. She's not that. I mean, she's impossible. <laughs> she's, she won't do that. I don't think I don't think Celeste. I mean, I she, Celeste, might, she, she might. Do you think Celeste will sack her just because? I don't no, think they'll sack her. Yeah. There's no reason to sack her. Yeah, she might. Like, but they might move her off the desk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She might blacklist her. Maybe send her back to FX. Yeah. Uh, but I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think they were sacked. I thought the way I read it was that she wanted to leave. That's the way I read that scene. Not that she was going to get sacked, um, which is kind of like the same with Venetia. Um, do you think that's the scene of Venetia? No, it's possible though. Fair. Like you can see her story ending here, unless obviously she has a connection with Robert next season or something. Speaking of Robert, we didn't touch on his interactions with with Yasmin. Yasmin? Oh, we can do that. Oh, we can do that now. We're about to go to Robert. We can do, we can do that now. If okay, I just, talk about I just thought they were nice and wholesome, so I didn't really want to get into them until we got to obviously the main thing. You uh, did, like up to the point where it became bad. Fair. Which she wasn't really in the scene. Um, oh, okay, fine. Let's talk about Robert. Then. Let's talk about Robert. So, Robert really has two, excluding those scenes, he has two big scenes. One is when Nicole calls him. 
and he tries to rebuff her, which is what I was talking about earlier that got such a big reaction from from Eo. Um and Nicole says, I wrote down so many like lines of dialogue from this episode. Nicole said, says, you're sat in a seat that costs a preeminent financial institution more dollars than you are worth. And Bro. I've got a ticket. And I'm just like, just, like, just like I reading my him. little ticket inspector. I said, what? <laughs> Others can hear this now. They're recording these calls. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. And, and she shows him the only thing that matters in, in this their world, which is money. And that she has a lot of the money. Like she has a lot of it. She has fuck you money. She's, um, that was that was a ridiculous like scene. Half a billion, because right? Half a billion. And what does Richie half say? That that's like reputation table. changing commission. That's like, bro. bro What's the? I can't even imagine. Do you, I was say, what do you know? What the what the kind of like average commission rate would be just to get? No. Um, no, so what does he get? Does he get up to a million? I mean, what is a million in half a billion? What's one percent of half a billion? That's five million, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be less than that. Maybe 0. 0.1. That's still 500k share. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. But reputation changing, it might be 1%. Might, might be knows. 1%. Yeah. Let's ask our finance consultants. Okay. Mm, I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. So he calls her and then she says what she says. And my, my notes in that scene was at least type it to DVD. Like, he gave Robert the option. Yeah. He yeah. was like, look, it's your it's your call. It doesn't change what happened. It's also money. Do whatever you want to do. Um, Yeah, and then Nicole says, um, things happen. And then things are fine. Bro. Jesus bro, Christ. what a line. I was like, Jesus what a Christ, line. man. This woman. <laughs> she, said, she said, you see? <laughs> you see? Things happen. Because we're not that you on it. Things happen and things are fine. And yeah. then... I just have my notes like what is what is in the middle? Like things happen and then things are fine. What is in the middle of that? It's just it's money. It's printing money, this. Money. It's just money. It's money. Which is which is why I thought it was so funny that that scene is then immediately followed by the first Yasmin and Celeste scene, which is like just getting into mm. the system and make money. Just like mm. it was just like make money. That's what matters in this state. Like just print biz. Um and then yeah, unless you want to talk about the Yasmin scenes, we can skip to Robert's like, hey, Harry Lotti, this is your finale moment. This is where you get to shine. <laughs> Unless you want to talk about the Yasmin scenes before we get there. Let's talk about the Yasmin scenes. Let's, Let's talk about the Yasmin, Yasmin scenes. scenes. So, Yasmin comes to see Robert when she's been, when she realizes that she can't get into her house anymore. And Robert, you know, gives her a hug, lets her in. And I think probably then takes her to Rishi's wedding. You don't think she was um, invited? I mean, maybe. Hmm. Maybe she was. I don't, she definitely wasn't planning on going. Yeah, she forgot. She definitely forgot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he takes her to Rishi's wedding and then they're in the bar and she says, thank you. Or basically like thanks him for allowing her to use him. And I'm just like, wow, Robert, how are we oh, back wait. here? So do you think that meant that referring to season one? I don't know. That's how I read it. Okay. I just, I thought it was the last five minutes. I him taking her to Rishi's wedding and everything and being there for him, which no, I wasn't no, sure. It's that, but then also, I was, yeah, I was a bit confused with which one it yeah. was. Which one it was. I yeah, think okay. it's also that because his response was the person I mean, wants to be used. Yeah, it felt mm. like talking about what happened in season one between them. Yeah, and then Yasmin uses him again <laughs> by saying, <laughs> "Oh." Can you? Oh, I don't want. I'm I didn't think about that like that. Because it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I was really upset with her because she's like, "Oh, thanks for letting me use you." Anyways, let me use you again because why? Because I'm tired. I spare like no. There's nothing stopping me from going to pick up the cocaine myself. But I just, uh, I'm just tired. I've had a long day. And Rob, in his oh, use me mood, <laughs> decides to go. So he goes, I guess he gets on his bike and he drives or he rides quite far to get mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. cocaine. And probably on the way back, he's stopped by a police officer mm-hmm. who finds the cocaine and eventually tosses him in jail. Yeah. yeah. And then the next things happen. So first of all, like the International Code Connect, incredible. I love that. Great, you just know great, that's, a, that, that's a thing that like Mickey and Conrad have heard at a directly or from a friend of a friend that's like that's too specific not to be a real thing i'm sorry like 
there are rich there are rich assholes that have that whatsapp group 100 percent yeah yeah 200 people wherever you are in the world you say i'm here and they get you the cocaine so incredible incredible um yeah and then i mean first of all when the scene cuts to him doing the breathalyzer i'm like oh jesus I was like, oh, Robert, what have you done? Oh, really? I wasn't even worried. Oh, wow. Because I was like, oh, no, this guy's, yeah. I think just because of the fact that, like, that's where the scene starts. So I'm like, mm. what was he doing that made them stop him? Okay. Was he, like, yeah. driving carelessly? Was recklessly, there, so, yeah. So that was that was the second time I did that. Oh, in during the episode. We'll talk about the first time in a bit. But, yeah, so obviously when the cocaine comes up and then, that's how you know Robert didn't go to boarding school, the way he tries to pick it up. Like, you have to just put your, you have to, you have to put your leg over it quickly. As in, like, this is how you know he didn't go to boarding school. <laughs> what are you doing, bro? <laughs> Slow. Like, what do you think was going to happen? You try to pick it up and, and the police officer will not see you bending. Like, what are you doing? You put your leg over it immediately. Uh, immediately, just try uh, For anyone who's listening that wants to know how to hide coke. Um, like, even the whole fact that it was where his wallet was, that was such a rookie mistake as well. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. But I guess that's like, that was. Maybe that's white privilege. That's like not just to get Fair. caught. Yeah, Fair. that part is just like yeah, you just yeah, where they put it, wherever. Uh, he probably goes out cash to pay the guy, and then I'm the wallet was just there. He just put it back in the wallet. Like, he didn't even think that's about dumb. it. Yeah. That's so dumb. Um, obviously, yeah, yeah. Like if it was me, I'd probably put it in my shoe or something. Like because yeah. again, yeah, like <laughs> again, white privilege. That's something that's illegal. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Uh, but yeah, he his phone died, so he only the only person he can call to get him out is Nicole. Mm. which leads us to another great scene of them in a car and he drops the second big word of the episode when he calls her a predator which 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 shakes it shakes nicole to the car but yeah which happy. i said which i said <laughs> you did say i think actually, in yeah. one of the earliest episodes this season yeah. i was like she's a predator and she can't help herself and like when he says that oof, it shakes her she's like i can't remember i didn't write out what she said about like well, you have a few drinks and you get the bit handsy and this generation are calling you predator. Um, yeah, what do you want to talk about that scene considering how much you hate Nicole and where that oh, scene God, is? I hate on. Nicole so much. I hate Nicole so much. And she does nothing to redeem herself. <laughs> like that line is even like, she's like, oh, you know, you get a little boozed. You touch a few people and now and they're like, ah, these kids, kids these days. <laughs> they don't know what it was like before. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> I I was interested by Robert's journey in that scene, and I, it was just too long for me to write down everything he says. Because at first, he's like, "You touch these people, and that's what they know about you." But no, they don't have like the the luxury of knowing you like I do and seeing you and you like having that connection, mm-hmm. right? But he also talks about how he's one of the few to go into her room and he sees how lonely her room is. Lonely, you get what I'm saying? It's not. It's not entirely real. Yeah, I didn't understand. Yeah, what okay, really, me too. What his main yeah point was like, and I, I was trying to figure out what was it that made him change his point because like, was he trying to say that she's not who she is as per the touching, or was he trying to say that no, that's actually who you are? You because he, well, he does back to what he said about parents. He mentions his mom about mm-hmm. how she's this. I think he calls up not it does not the word. But I think void he of she, need or something like yeah, that. Yeah, just almost insatiable and like, and I think that's the first. Well, I, they've done it jokingly, but I think that's the first time he's really, really compared her to his mom, isn't it? Yeah. Like, it's actually like, yeah. So, I wasn't really sure. That he, those two points in isolation are very strong points, but I wasn't really sure what he was trying to make, like, by connecting those points together. Mm-hmm. But Nicole gives him the option, like, okay, get out, if that's how you really feel. But, no, because Robert has his mommy issues. Robert likes Nicole. I think that's the point of this whole thing. Like, cause what does she say when, he, when he's like, it's lonely? She's like, yeah, and you never felt better. Mm-hmm. Like you enjoy being in that loneliness, which is like, yeah, like you maybe we know that actually it's come to me now, but we know that he tried to get into Oxford for his mom. Like he's been mm-hmm. searching for his mom's validation and then she died too early to give it to him. So yeah, obviously he'll feel comfortable in that loneliness because that's where he can like if that's how his mom was, he gets to be at one with his that that feeling of searching for his mom's validation again. Yeah, so it's just I don't know. I, I found that scene, even though like some parts were a bit, I wasn't sure what Robert was trying to get at, but I think just like I said, in isolation, those two things make a lot of sense and it makes sense why, to me, why he wouldn't get out of the car. Mm. Because like, I still feel like, I think another thing is that he's been, he's he's hurt. Like, everything he said there, and I think the reason why I come out like a word from him, because like, everything he's trying to say since he found out that she, she touches people. Touch other people. Other people, yeah. <laughs> touches people, like, just touching people. Like, he's hurt. He, he, he likes her. And, mm-hmm. 
Again, I don't want to sound like an abuser, apologist, but I do think she likes really him as good well. Job. <laughs> really good job. For someone who's not trying, I'm, I'm doing very yeah. well. Yes, uh, but no, I do think I do think she likes him as well. I don't think I think it's a bit different from from Venetia and Harper and everyone else. She's probably done done it too. So yeah, I mean, relationship is. Which is why I, was, I guess I was surprised by you, you and Rishi, like the Rishi thing breaking. Because like this is a show where I'm trying to rationalize this relationship between <laughs> between Robert and Nicole. Like this is not Rishi cheating that's going to break me. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. So do you have any final thing on that scene and Robert before we we head off to our no, last? No, no, I think I think we covered it. Let's go to yeah. our last hero. And maybe actually I can't even say I was going to say maybe the actual hero, but well we'll find out. See? So Gus, um, Gus's episode begins by Aurora informing him that the anti-competition inquiry has been stopped, which would allow Amazon to take over Fast Aid. Uh-huh. Um, this is obviously a big blow to Gus because he's been working on this project. He's put a lot of time into it. He kind of put out, he gave up his quote-unquote passion, what he was enjoying doing uh-huh. to work on this, in order to further his career. Um. Yeah, and then he goes back home. And then watching this scene back, knowing what he says let, later, I want to know what you think. I kind of believe now that he that Gus knew what he was doing when he was dropping the scene. You think so? Watching it back, I'm like, because he he gives information that he doesn't need to give up. He could have it was really as angry as he put it, he could have just walked back into the room. Yeah. Obviously, I know this now because of what he says later, he admits later, which again we'll get to that. But to me, it, at the time it just felt like he was trying to gain re- recognition was something that he didn't really do but watching that scene again i was like oh wait that's i think there's a line where he just mentions like fast aid or anti he says something that he doesn't need to say that like to to put harper on this on the on the on the scent almost like she was she was going cold i was like oh no 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 no, no. you need to come back this way so oh, I see. and we also don't see what happens immediately he closes the door which in my head might just be him smiling but like yeah <laughs> she's, she's i've sent her away she's gonna do what she needs to do but yeah i mean Again, I'm just me just wanting not wanting Gus to not being duped by Harper, but and then getting fired for no reason. But yeah, um, do you have anything else before we go back when he goes back to the office? No, let's do let's do when he goes back. To okay, the so office. he goes back to the office, and um, this is where I left. Okay, before we get before we get that, Aurora confirms this is obviously after Bloom has done his thing on CNN, mm-hmm. and Aurora confirms that the anti um competition inquiry is back on because of what Bloom has said. Mm-hmm. and at first she obviously acts like she's angry I meant to read that she's angry and then she's like well done like yeah and if we pause at this point I was yeah. like wow Bloom is mad because how is everybody happy with this move he's made Bloom is happy Harper and Eric are happy mm-hmm. <laughs> now Gus is happy Aurora is happy Aurora is happy mm-hmm. I was like oh wow kudos man okay and then he takes credit in a, in not specifically, but it's like I can be loose lipped when I want to, and then Aurora is like, you know, I have to sack you for that. And that I was when I believe. that was when why? I did my why first. Why did you do that? But I guess it's like you, if you did good work, you want people, and because of how I guess how cunning she's proven to be in that scene, he probably didn't think that she was go, actually going to fire him. Fair. Like she's clearly happy about it. I'm like like okay, we're shady together, and he doesn't actually confirm. He's just like I can't. Did confirm or deny? So, yeah, I was when when she said after five years, I was like, I was like, oh, that was, but I was like, oh no, I, was like, I felt so bad for him. I actually laughed. I was like, God, man, why well, it might be the best it? firing I've ever seen on TV. It was really, really good. It was because, was it? yeah, because he, my reading of that is that she confirms that she played him yeah, exactly, and I was I was surprised by that. I was like, oh. That yeah, which is like so she told him, look, I put the seeds for you because I f- figured you're gonna do what you did, and then he obviously did what he did to put the seeds for Harper. And if anything, the only person in this whole sequence that was not smart or playing anyone was Harper. <laughs> no, Harper acted the way everybody expected her. To act. <laughs> Although I'm not sure, I'm still not sure Gus meant meant for Harper to do that. I'm still not Yeah, sure. I think the Gus one is very hit and miss. I think you can go back go back and watch the scene and see what I you think. I watched it twice now. I just I feel like even the way he came into the house because why should Harper be there like in the morning? Oh no, I do I do think he was sad. I don't think he was not sad, but I think when he sees Harper there No not not sad. I mean oh you think it was just like, like an opportunistic thing. 
Yeah, I think he was always going to try and use Harper, but it, he didn't know she was going to be there in that moment. Like, Harper, remember Harper called me the day before asking for inside information? Harper, man. Like, all he had to do was just drop his seed <laughs> during dinner or whatever and should have, should have bit. So, um, yeah, I don't think he, he knew she was there, but like, but he was like, okay. And then he like, took a day off or whatever he said. Um, but yeah, Aurora Sorry. basically played him as he played Harper, and then she. While firing him, she gives him some parting words, rejesting. She's like, keep jesting, you're dead. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you might not be good at politics, but you look like you're good at politicking. Which I didn't understand. <laughs> well, so I think it's like, I don't know, it's like the maybe the back door stuff, but not being in front. Okay, because when you're in front, you have to do, what's it called? Maybe like, maybe there's like front, integrity, be... there's all those sorts of things that you have to do. But like, if you're doing back door stuff, then... Or maybe like I think maybe politicking is like you are the one twisting the knife, the You're operator. the one doing the yeah. yeah the machinations. But in politics, like like with cause, it can be done to you. Oh, I see. Okay, so that, that's, that's how I read it. So it's like you can maybe stay behind the scenes and just do the things and slide the money under the in the envelope or whatever. But when you're in politics, then things can happen to you. Um. There's a dinner between Gus, Leo, and, and, and Jesse, in which Gus is like, I was fired. And Jesse's like, yeah, I had a feeling you would be. <laughs> oh, we can see what we can do about it. He says Will again, you... which killed me. <laughs> again, it was incredible. Incredible delivery. Um, which leads us to the plane bit. So, what is Gus's job? Is he like Bloom's like personal secretary? Yeah, that's what I was personal... thinking. So, is he yeah. like Carolina or Jess from from Succession. I wish I had my wine. Uh, take another shot. Let's forget. Look, forget what this final episode. Um, <laughs> I, I, I let it go. You brought Succession first. This episode, so I, I let it go since. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe okay. like Jess. Okay. So my question is: Is Gus happy about this job? Because it seems like he is, but I don't know why. I he think is. he's happy to have a job. It seemed it seemed more than that. It seemed like he was happy about the job, like him looking over the out of the window. It seemed like, but I'm like, this is so far from, from when you were happy, like helping the guy, and mm. I think it's Croydon East. I think and is a fake district that he put or whatever fake council. <laughs> um, it's it's not the same job. You know what I'm trying to say? It's like why is like he doesn't like, look why like is this oh, bringing him joy. Yes, yes. It looks like, mm. he, and I That's it a back fair to the question. it back to the politics and not politics thing. Maybe he's. Actually, think about it. Maybe he's actually just shut down that side of himself, the side that likes yeah, that was helping that what guy. I was feeling. And then he's just the Oxford guy who likes politicking, but well, not politics. And then Bloom would be politicking without the politics. A lot more lucrative, I guess. Helps him open more doors. I think, yeah, that's actually a good thing. Maybe the whole, like, a good point, sorry. Maybe the whole way he got Jess, um, Leo into Oxford felt good. So he was like, hmm, you know, I'm, I made yeah. something happen. Which a lot of people good. don't get to say. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Then it felt good because when he when the lecturer is like, I knew you'd be good at politics, he smiles. Mm, he he like he likes yeah. that. Uh even so, when yeah, Aurora is like the... say say politics, I, I de- it definitely felt good. You're right. Yeah. So I guess he's just giving up that side of himself of like I like I guess he's a he's a man of multitudes, he can like different things. Um Is this the last we see of Gus? I really I'm just out of the show. I really hope not. But what do you think? No, I don't think so. So you think J. Duplass comes back next season? I think, I think yes, because. Because what? Let's go into the last, last bit of the episode then. Okay. True. Oh, I had not put those two things together. Mm. Okay. That's interesting because obviously they are going to America and exactly <laughs> somebody's visa is about to run out. Okay, but before we go there, before we go, let's talk about let's talk about Jesse, please. J. Duplass. I don't think we've spoken about him in depth in episode two when you said he was a cool guy. Um, great character, great addition, great performance, great lines. Like I don't know, should we just like I just want to throw some some flowers? Jesse Praise, man. Like yeah, actually Jesse Praise. I don't think we like yeah. fan love. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just like, yeah, just like, and sure, I think the last two episodes, seeing him interact more with Gus than with Harper, I was like, oh, you're a good character. It's a different, like, yeah, it's a different side. Yeah. yeah, I was like, oh, this this works. This looks good. 
Um, yeah, I, I really thought... enjoyed his interview. Um, the scene when they're interviewing oh. on on CNN, I thought yeah. that was excellent. Was like, um, was did you under. actually see any of what's his name? I forget his name. The activist investor guy that came on TV to warn people that COVID was going to tank the stock markets. Was that a real person? Oh yeah, yeah, Bill. Something oh, you I'm know, I don't name. like uh, finance news. Is not something I'm going to I'm going to follow. <laughs> I don't yeah. understand it. Oh, I didn't know there was someone like that. Okay. Wait, sure. Hold on. Let me I love the um, uh, the byline and the not byline. What's, the, what's the word? Yeah. What's the word? You, oh, I can't remember now. Like on news, the the thing that goes the ticker tape that goes under. I can't oh, I think it's a ticker. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but like when you're like ethical investing, <laughs> is it a bubble or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> That's really good. Um, but yeah, no, I thought it was. I think it was getting that scene. Like does these. He really embodied. I saw. I saw a review earlier in season. I was like, he was miscast. I was like, no, he wasn't. Like, this is just. I like mm-hmm. this. I like. He's miscast because you're looking for a Zuckerberg type. Like, exactly. this is this you're look, character. Or maybe they're looking for an Ackman type. Mm. But I think. I think the. I think the Jesse character is. Just Wait, is his name Bill Ackman? Person yeah. I'm talking about. I swear he was referenced earlier this season. Oh, did they? I think someone name dropped him. I think someone. Named I mean, him. they I might think, have. Yeah, I think it was one or two. They name name dropped Bill Ackman. But yeah, um, great. Great character, great addition, great performance. I, I hope we see him again next season. Even if it's not like an epi- um, a series regular kind of thing. Irregular just, again, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's let's go to the last five minutes of this episode. And before we do that, I want to recite what recite what Eric says like during that bar scene at the beginning of the episode to Harper. Um, because I I think think about it, I think it really influences what he his decision towards the episode. He says to Harper, do you feel like everything we do is a confidence game? Mm. I wonder sometimes, are we the marks? What did I build? What did I make? What do I leave? And do I believe in any of it now? And if I don't, what does that leave you? Which is what I said earlier about legacy. Mm-hmm. Um, so just think about that in a second. And the reason I was thinking about that was because of how that this final this episode ends, the final five minutes. I think um, Eric thinking of all that legacy, what is are we the marks, whatever, and then his shock when Harper throws DVD and Rich under the bus, uh-huh. and then realizing that like she has done some insider trading. I think it's almost like I kind of need to protect you from yourself. Yeah, like I don't want you, I don't want everybody following me to be a terrible person. I and you can't be as soulless as as I am and as you have like the future of being. So let's talk about the last five minutes. Harper comes in to peer point as she sees that DVD's badge isn't working, which is a tough one for a boy. That's the last time we see DVD. Let's talk about let's talk about DVD in a second. Um, so she waits outside until obviously he's disappeared, and then she goes into the building and she sees Rishi at the desk. Mm. And Eric comes to grab her for one of their regular chats. And uh, actually, do you know what I got really fixated on in this in this sequence? What Harper's top, her shirt, really. I feel like I've seen it before. I think it's what she wore in episode one when she first goes back uh, to the office. And if it uh, is, I didn't have time to do proper research, but if it is, that's incredible storytelling. If like what she wore the first time she came back to the office and last time at the office is the same thing. Because it the pointless. top looks... Yeah, I mean, if it is, shout out to Colin, um, Colin, Colin Glennon, who is the costume designer. Because if because it, it just looks too familiar. I was like, I've seen this shirt before on Carpet before, so I think it's what she wore in the first episode. If it is, then that's just incredible uh-huh. storytelling. But yeah. When did you realize that something was up? Um, when Rishi is there. I was just oh. like, Oh, something is wrong now. <laughs> because something is wrong. Like there's no there's no two ways about it. Rishi yeah. can't just be there. And then Eric brushes it off. When she asks him, "Oh, why is Rishi back?" He's like, "Oh, I found the head count." I was like, "Oh man." That was me. When he says, "I found the head count," I'm like, "Not only something wrong, I'm like something's wrong for Harper." I'm like, "Some Harper, you're in trouble at for this her. point." Yeah, because when it was like, the, "I found the head this count." This is this antithesis of what they had sold to Adler. Adler. There's no finding head count. <laughs> Do you think Rishi knew or knows about everything else? I think so because his his response was actually no maybe not maybe his response was based on oh i thought we were going to new york but here i am mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
But I thought initially when I was watching it, I was like, oh, maybe he knew because his response was, ah, I should be asking you, Aspe. <laughs> you tried yeah. to get me and now it's going to happen to you. But yeah. Yeah. So obviously when he says, I've, um, I had to, I found the head count. I'm like, oh, okay, Halper is in trouble. But I didn't see what happened. I come in. And he yeah, talk. neither did I. Neither did I. When she walks into that room, what are you thinking? I think that I thought, you know, the whole time that they are walking, I was like, oh, he's taking her to Pierpoint Services. That oh, was what I was thinking the oh whole time. that is, wow. Like, he's going to force her to sit down and talk about her feelings. That's a very generous reading on both characters. I, that's, <laughs> I that's so nice of you to think that. <laughs> I thought she was in trouble uh, for the insider trading. But I thought it was going to be like very low-key trouble, not, nothing too serious. Yeah, yeah. Peer points of that's what well, I'm happy for you. This is why you're, this is why you're so wholesome in your heart. This is why you can be angry. Guy. This is why you can be angry with Rishi because he yeah. always like the best side. <laughs> <laughs> he was like he's gonna give her first therapy. Oh, what's I was like, yeah, maybe he's going to like leave her here and they will do their work and she'll have to do this and probably take time off and maybe yeah. join them again beginning of season three. Fair enough. Uh, but yeah, up to the point. Up to the point, the guy says the thing. I'm still. Th- I'm thinking what. It's, Papa is thinking, yeah, thinking what happened, that, thinking, yeah. that it's like that, and then he dropped, and I was like, "Wow, I had forgotten yeah. about it." I was like, it, "I was like, wow." And then, can we just talk about Mihala and Ken in this scene? Oh, so because good. she was oh so good in this God. episode, but especially in this scene. This did scene, I went through trying to sell, like that did she's they? being genuine. Um, what do you mean? Like when she's trying to get Rishi to buy Raikan, and she's like, "Oh, look!" At, like she looked so panicked. I thought that was just an excellent oh. performance. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But like Ken Long's let's talk about him first. His almost uncomfortability with what he's doing. He feels so sad, but he almost feels like he has to do it just for like yeah. for actually for her own good. And when he just utters those lines at the end, I have to let you go, you're fired or whatever. Oh Jesus Christ. Like even from the moment he, he's walking through the like through the bullpen and he like <laughs> he blanks Kenny. And then he has a headache on the at the at the lips. It's just like, oh my god, yeah. I've been under the weather. I was like, oh. And yeah, and Mihala is just so good in this scene. It's just really good. Like, just really good. Like, when we she goes in and she's like shouting to the Eric and is like not shouting, begging to Eric is like, um, I didn't know Bruno was going to do that. Yeah. Eric's like, Hopper, stop! Like, Don't make you worse for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, like that the one main... you can go to jail for. This one is just like, like you know. <laughs> when. He mentions the thing about her degree. I don't even think Harper is relieved. Like I feel like she might even be make it might even be worse. Too. I don't even know. I can't read it. Oh, no, I think it must be worse. It must be worse, right? Yeah. Because, because maybe the side is like okay. Yeah, she can talk her way out like, of that as just yeah. printing biz. This one is like your visa is really, really revoked. Yeah, that was. But so they have to sack you. That was that was just a great. I, I did not like. That was hey, that was like. That was an incredible ending to this, to this episode, to this season. To this season, I, yeah. I, like, I did not... I, I won't lie. Like, comment. on the first watching, I was a bit disappointed. That okay. That was the silver bullet that they used to, you know... Because I, I loved everything about where the story gets to. I was just like, really? The degree? Really? Because I think if you remember when we are doing our recap, we were like, I really hope this doesn't come up again. Mm-hmm. I don't want it to be a spectre hanging over her head anymore. And I think this puts the nail. Like, yeah, I think, I think that now, yeah. this puts it firmly done. But like, yeah, I was initially, I was like, oh, I don't really like that. Because then, I think the thing is like, this was the only time they could have done it. Yeah, exactly. They that can't was bring it to season saying. three or season yeah. four because then we, we become suits, right? So it's like, <laughs> this was, and it makes sense because like, you're not telling the show if like, she's just going to get away with this. Like Abba, like what are what are you actually what are you actually writing? So yeah, it, ma- it makes sense. I I think you're right. This is season two is the only time that sometimes it's gone. it just came out of the blue. Like I think she mentioned it once or twice this season, maybe once when she was talking with her brother. But apart from that, like she hasn't really doesn't. She's just like oh I was like oh wow this is it a hasn't thing come up no. that actually happened yeah um yeah that was it was great yeah, exclamation the, point to end the episode and end the season a, so a, a really really good season i think yeah one of the best second seasons of a show i've ever seen mm-hmm. bar none like in terms of comparing it to season one but remember last week when we were recording you asked me oh which other show has done such a jump yeah season one to two and 
I felt like an idiot because it only came to me today, like as we're pre- as 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 we're preparing to record this. Mm-hmm. You mentioned the show in last week's episode, Halt and Catch oh, Fire. Oh, oh, really? They did a job like one that. Was fine. Season one was fine. Like it was good. I enjoyed the vibes of the characters. The story was yeah, you know, it was there. But season two, fuck me. Fair enough. They take it, they take it to another level. It becomes a great show in season two. And it's a workplace drama as well, isn't it? Yeah. I haven't seen it. You know, I haven't seen it. Actually, speaking of, there's another show I haven't seen, but I, th- I think I've heard that it does a jump like this as well. Leftovers. Which does he have a jump like that? Bro, that's another one. Between that's one another good one. That's, that's another really I good mean, look, it's great. It's in great company. If, 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 if that people he's, he's pulling rank with, Leftovers. Ah, but Leftovers, Leftovers is interesting because Leftovers just, it keeps getting, <laughs> it keeps getting better. Leftovers kept getting better and weirder which is really really interesting it's really hard for a show to that's do that's a difficult balance to do that's a it's very really hard for a show to do. to do that but like season three the final season of leftovers was super weird but excellent excellent television yeah yeah this season is just like uh, the jump makes no sense to me i can't i just have i haven't seen a show do it and i talk about this i get so hyperbolic because it sounds like i'm just throwing but like I, I can't think of a show that has done this like Every other, I didn't see the show. I mean, obviously, yeah, but I haven't watched either of those two shows. I think I'm, I think I'm, um, uh, justified. Just like uh, every show that makes a good step up in their season, like okay, I saw those threads. I did not see these threads coming in season one. I did not see you becoming the show. Like so, I'm just and again, that's why I say I also have to put the caveat that I really like season one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what are we doing this? I always sound like I hated season one, which I did not, obviously. But like, mm. I liked season one, but like, I just, I just didn't see this this coming. But yeah, it's was... the, it's it's the same. Like, it's a similar thing for Hot and Catch Fire. Season one, I really liked, but mm. more so because first of all, I like the world, which is almost the same for industry, and secondly, I really like the characters. There's also four leads in that show, so there are a lot know. of there are a lot. Well, of, it was like, one of their refer- one of their influences, so I guess it makes yeah. sense. Um, should we talk about DVD quickly? Just like if we're ever gonna see him again. Shout out DVD, man, my yeah. boy, pure of heart. <laughs> I was talking to my. <laughs> you bleep this part. I was talking to. My you don't have to say it. If you're just like anyway. Okay. <laughs> Yesterday. You know I can't about... bleep on YouTube. Why not? I'll bleep it on YouTube. Let's go. Okay. So I was talking to my beep yesterday, <laughs> um, about industry season season two episode seven yeah and we're talking about dvd's reaction to hearing nicole had molested harper yeah. and i was just like my poor boy is so pure he's so pure of heart did she agree with you she didn't because <laughs> <laughs> she she completely disagreed she read it you know what's interesting about tv she read it in a completely in a way that i would never have read it wait how did she read it she said that well, she she tied things together that may or may not be um, related. She was mm-hmm. thinking that he's assigning that, um, he's giving that more weight than it, it needs to be because he's still hung up on the fact that she cut him off after Berlin. So he's like, oh, this is the reason that she cut me off. Not that she's not into me. It's because... <laughs> and I was oh, like, oh, wow. I've never read it that way. Like, never. So I w- was reading a review, I think... I'm not going to mention the review because I can't, I'm not, I don't want to tell you a lie, but I think it was written by a female writer. And then she said, she read that scene by saying that for a moment, DVD seems more preoccupied with the fact that Harper shared this with Robert and, and not him. Mm. And then he switches back, which is again, a third different interpretation none of us has I, even I would have never read that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, but what, what is, like, what was her response to why he was crying then in the store? No, it didn't have a good just just <laughs> stress. We didn't really talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's I guess that's on. I mean, yeah, obviously, man. for our love of DVD, I'm love choosing DVD, to maintain. Love of regret. I'm, choos- I'm choosing to maintain our what our interpretation of that scene. My just initial of, reading. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> because we're, we're going to love him. But <laughs> again, look, as any great character, I just hope we see him again next season. I can see a situation where this is the end of his story. I hope yeah, not. Yeah, same. And then he has like a. Um, Daria kind of pop up in season two, season three, but I hope I do hope it's seeing. I just feel like it works so well with this in, in this scene. Like it's yeah. I mean, obviously, lots of Americans on this show, but it's always so weird or difficult. Which again goes to Bloom, just bring an American into a show that is so firmly set like this in in British culture and it's in, really in London. British, yeah. And then they just work like there was a scene like that. 
Adler scene. There were three Americans just talking about in a London bank. Like, it's like okay, this is just the show. Um, but yeah. Any final, before we go into our lines, any final thoughts on just the show in ter- general, the characters? Let's touch on, let's do ratings of the the heroes, the heroes' journeys in this season. Such a random, random so, long thing. To, yeah. So Harper, yeah, out of ten, what do you give her journey? You know, I hate rating. What do you? What, what's her, <laughs> I only did that to stress you out. It's fine. Oh, so you do? <laughs> I don't really want your ratings. So okay, thank you. Let's, let's because I, I wanted you to panic. <laughs> well done. You've done that. So successful. Um. Yeah, no, I think, but just in general, I think everybody's storyline. Look, I am biased because I love this show right now and I love this season, but I just think everybody's storyline worked well. I think even the guys that seem to have like less screen time, like maybe Gus and and Robert, just it just worked. It just when it did like when it when they need to show up, they showed up. Like they're like like Robert might have little things in in episodes, but like as a story, as a season worth of story, it's very good. Like uh-huh. dealing with his mommy issues through Nicole, impeccable stuff. Um. Yeah, I just I enjoyed every everything. I I happy that they brought back all four because it have been very easy to not bring back Ghost, for example. Or, yeah. So I just yeah I enjoyed the entire season. I like. I'm interested to see a season where, I mean, I was gonna say where Harpan, he has been our friends, but Harpan might not even be in the country. So God knows. <laughs> um, maybe we'll finally see Harpan's mom. I guess next season. Probably. Yeah, which that character has a lot a lot to live up to <laughs> in terms of. This will be the weekend which okay, quickly, over headlines. Do you have any? Uh no. I think my favorite lines in this episode were heard. I mean, we already talked about the entire conversation between Rishi and Danny. Okay, we didn't talk about let's bar. talk about it. It's on my list. It's on my... Ridiculous. <laughs> which one? The the the, the when he, when Rishi's telling the story about him walking in on his parents having sex. That's and incredible. Then... That's incredible. That is like what <laughs> you do is like. Danny asked him, "Oh, did you did you just turn or walk away?" And like, no, I I went up to him. I said, "Go easy on her, bro." <laughs> Rishi. Then earlier in that scene, no, no, the scene before, Rishi is like to the bartender, "Are you stirring any oversized barmaids over there?" Oh, Which really? obviously makes Eric laugh. Um, then is it and bit... also links into another overheard line when Rishi is mm-hmm. talking about how hungover he is in the morning. I didn't hear what he said there. Oh my god! Oh, I heard like, that part, but I didn't hear the. the oh, so hungover! But I needed to load up some extremely questionable images to get myself going this morning, and then I think whoever he's talking to, maybe it was Danny. I think asked, it was Danny. It was Danny? Asked him, "Oh, what did you do?" He was like, "I needed to get some professional women, but like big women, really, really big. I'm talking big." I said, "What?" <laughs> I didn't catch that at all because I just lost. Rishi. I lost track of what he was saying. <laughs> Oh my god, Rishi, man. Um, and then in this last scene, right before they talk about Rishi working on his parents having sex, Danny's like, I almost got married myself once. Yeah. And then I didn't hear anything he said. I didn't and then hear Rishi that. responds, That's heavy, mate. So now I need that episode. I need that. I'm sorry, Conrad and need Mickey, I need that. I need that thing of what happened to her. Danny. <laughs> but what was so heavy? Um, okay, one more. Well, not one more, but then this is between Jackie and Kenny when Kenny tries to shake uh, uh, Eric and Jackie's like, the, the big man just blank you. And Eric is like, sorry, Kenny's like, honestly, just give me a bottle of whiskey and a fucking gun. And yeah. Jackie's like, nah, I can't see you doing yourself like that. You're more of a hose in the exhaust kind of guy. <laughs> and Kenny's like, Jackie, I drive a Tesla. <laughs> You know, I have missed that. That's really good. It was a whole conversation. It was a whole back and forth. That's really good. And That's they weren't really on screen. It was just so good. <laughs> um, yeah, and then, okay. I have lines for you. It's when... I don't think you would have cut this. It's when um, Harper and Eric are walking to what you thought was peer point services. Um, so someone in the office says, what's <laughs> the next 12 months? Yeah. And somebody replies, we need to make Pierpoint the market leader in ethical investing. Exactly. And then the person replies, good. Do you know who I said that who, one. Do you know who said those lines? No, who? Conrad and Mickey. Really? That's definitely Conrad and Mickey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I heard the voice. I was like, I was like, they've been on this podcast. I had the I had the Leo, I was the Leo meme. I was like, oh, they've been on this podcast. I was I was definitely <laughs> Conrad and Mickey. Nice. Um speaking those lines, which is I, which I guess makes it, sense. It was really good because of the ticker. What, what do you mean? 
Oh yeah, yeah, th- yeah, yeah. Because I only caught that later. Or rather, I, think I only caught the ticker later. On the second watch, because yeah. Because I got that beer, which makes sense. I guess. So I guess Richie doesn't have friends outside work because his best men work at beer points. <laughs> because Mick is his best man at <laughs> beer points. Fair. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's like. Do you have any final thing? That's. I think that's a good. I think we. I feel like we covered this season. I don't know if there's anything we haven't touched on. No, I think. I think no. I think we've done the season. I think this episode was excellent. Yeah, I, don't think I think the, that, the stock, the yes. landing, all that. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just. Look, I'm not. I'm only going. I'm going to reference the show one more time because we have to. But like, this was a this was a strong kind of it gave me the vibe of a succession finale. Just like everything is just where it needs to be done, and then it has that twist at the end. They're like, oh, shit. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I like, look, obviously, AO says in three finale is best of all, best episode of all time. So, yes. so I'm not saying it's on that level. Just so AO doesn't come to my house and beat me. I'm not saying it's on that level. It but is. I think this was a great episode. Great finale. I think, look, we can't believe at the point, but I think this is like, even forget, forgetting the jump, I think this is a great season of TV on its own. Full stop, yeah. Like, yeah. just a great season of TV. Like, I think there was a point where, no free ads, was a point where AV Club gave them like three straight A's or something stupid. Like, it's just like, so... Yeah. Which, which, I don't know if, I don't know how deep you guys are into AV Club lore. Probably not. The last time I saw that happen was season five, part two of Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. I don't think I've seen that. Maybe Succession. Maybe I'm, I don't even know. I don't even know if Succession has reached that. Three straight, yeah. Three straight A's is ridiculous. I feel like there's a point of getting B plus. So, so, so they have to break. Yeah, yeah. They have to, to break, break the like we yeah, can't do it on that. <laughs> the editor was and like, I feel them. I feel them. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's some points this season where I'm like, I have to calm down a bit. I can't keep on shouting at ten about this show because they just always like, we can't take your, we can't take your recommendation seriously because you're just over the yeah. top. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, that's a good point. Ayo, thank you very much, not only for this episode but like for this season. Just a peek behind the curtain, like obviously, Ibuka, Chinedu, we are just kind of busy with their schedule, so I wasn't really sure I could make this industry thing work, but Ayo was able to do it, and like, yeah. Thank you very much for 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 this run. It's been a You're pleasure. Welcome. Thank you for having me. You've been you've been great. I've loved you. It's been the highlight Opinions. of my year so far. Knock on wood. It's done. You've said it. <laughs> <laughs> it. So for far. For those who care, let them let, let, let them hear what he said. Yeah. So um, that might also be an, a highlight, but we'll see. What might be a highlight? Something significant is happening at the end of the year. So. No, it's happening next year. Um, true that is next year. but you always think that everything that's happened up to now is not as significant which is just fine i i, I think mean, that yeah fair. yeah <laughs> okay it's not every day you get to talk to makers of a HBO it's show. not it's not um and yeah like thank you to the listeners you guys have listened to this episode like this has been the most we've got like feedback online about any of our shows like so Never. actually i've had people like dming me dming us Never. about liking this what are you saying fan love, fan love. <laughs> about liking this episode and liking our uh, coverage on the show so that, that obviously means a lot like, i've tried to i think i replied to everyone just like it really means a lot that you guys actually listen and also reply because i'm always scared that the the numbers on the audience listenership is i just bought so it's good to know the actual people watch listening to it um you don't know what i pay for in india you don't know you don't know the farm i have that, that's trying to get my my, my listenership up um okay. I, I see you frown it um but yeah no thank you so much for that like this episode and liked it enough to recommend to people because I from the numbers you can tell that people actually recommend it. So thank you very much. And most especially like thank you to Conrad and Mickey. I don't know if you're listening to this, but first of all, not thank you not, not just for this season, because it was a great season that we've, that we've we've said many times. But thank you for coming on and after episode five. Thank you for constantly supporting us on social media. That was just like yeah, things that you don't you not have to do. So thank you very much for just helping us and supporting us. And yeah. I'm excited for season three. My for your construction campaign for industry season two started last week, so yeah, I'm about to I'm buy some dream. billboards. Um, the but yeah, I, that was this year's Emmys shall never be repeated. <laughs> Affliction shall not rise again. Oh my god, what? <laughs> Look, okay, I just, just so you know, Peter Corso has to be best director next year. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I'm not even going to go into that, that debate with you, whatever. Okay, whatever. Fine. I'll, I'll watch Better Call Saul and then I'll get back to you. Okay. Um, ugh, I can't believe. Anyway. Okay. Um, Ayo, thank you very much for coming on. And guys, thank you for listening. And yeah, join us next week when I don't know how he will top our 
conversation with Mickey and Conrad. We'll be joined by the great Daniel Kaluuya. Bye, guys.